So for me, the most challenging thing was probably time management. Um, in high school, you had everything kind of scheduled out for you. And then once I got to college, it was all, you know, free time. And so for me, it was a time management thing. So for me, in my personal experience, the failures that I've been through stuff that kind of prepared me for, you know, going into high school, I mean, going into college, knowing that, you know, you're not perfect. It's okay to fail, learn from your mistakes. That was a big thing for me. So I was never good at science, um, especially chemistry. Never was good at chemistry. Um, but I didn't let that deter me because I knew it was something that I liked. I knew it was something that I want and I envisioned myself in a particular role and I'm not going to let anything stop me from getting there. After I finished college, I actually plan on going to med school and um, completing that. Then after med school, I kind of want to travel. Um, not safe for enjoyment, but I kind of really want to help countries that can really help themselves. So, like a pro bono thing. Hi, my name is Glenn Humphrey, and I'm a sophomore biology major at Birmingham Southern College. Today, we will be discussing thermodynamics, but specifically entropy. Our learning targets today are discussing the relationship between entropy and delta G, predicting whether a reaction has a favorable or unfavorable change in entropy, discussing the relationship between temperature and entropy, and to calculate the change in entropy of a system. Entropy is a thermodynamic quantity representing the unavailability of a system's thermal energy for conversion. Entropy is a measure of a degree of randomness or disorder of a system. Entropy is quite an easy concept to understand when thinking about everyday situations, like the entropy of a room a room that has been recently cleaned and organized has a very low entropy. But as time goes by, it's more likely that the room will become disordered and messy. Thus, its entropy will increase. The natural tendency of a system is for its entropy to increase. For a given substance, the entropy of a liquid state is greater than the entropy of a solid state. Likewise, the entropy of a gas is greater than the entropy of a liquid. Therefore, entropy increases from a solid to a liquid. Look up at the visuals to see examples of how entropy naturally happens. The word entropy is being broken apart as time goes on. And the chart shows the state of entropy in different states of matter. Entropy also increases when solid reactants form liquid products. Entropy increases when a substance is broken up into multiple parts. The system of dissolving increases entropy because the solute particles become separated from one another when a solution is formed. Entropy increases as temperature increases. An increase in temperature means that the particles of the substance has greater kinetic energy. Watch how the picture depicts the effect temperature has on entropy. There is a positive relationship between entropy and temperature. Chemical reactions also tend to proceed in such a way as to increase the total entropy of a system. Note, 
Entropy generally increases in reactions in which the total number of product molecules is greater than the total number of reactant molecules. An exception to this rule is when a gas is being produced from a non-gaseous reactant. Look up at the picture in the slide to visually see the breaking down and depiction of each variable in the formula. Hess's law, also known as Hess's law of constant heat summation, states at constant temperature, heat energy changes accompanying a chemical reaction will remain constant, irrespective of the way the reactants form each product. Every substance possesses energy within. The internal energy depends on the nature of force existing in the substance and the temperature. When the substance undergoes chemical reactions, some bonds connecting some atoms are broken and some bonds are made new. The breaking and making of bonds involve energy. The steps for solving for entropy are very simple. Step one, balance the chemical equation. Step two, Look up the entropy of formation of your products and reactants from your table given. Step three, set up the calculations. Please note to pay close attention to any stoichiometry in your reaction. Step four, plug in and solve. Pay close attention to possible sign changes as well. For our last slide, take some time to answer the question on your own. In this problem, the degree of disorderliness can be evaluated by the number of moles of gases. Among the three states of matter, gases have the highest entropy because there are many ways in which a gaseous molecule can be arranged in space. As such, a system that requires a higher number of moles of gas is an entropic system. This means that the system has a positive entropy. In the reaction, the reactant side has four moles of gases, while the product side only has two moles of gases. This means that the system becomes less entropic. Thus, entropy has a negative value.